motionless there's no life signs but just to be sure you touch the eye the animal's completely dead okay no suffering nice clean kill the bullet hole is exactly where you were told to put it the bullet holes there so it was where you were practicing this morning I mean I understand the reasons we do it you put over a very good case and that's what I came here to do and uh well, I'm pleased I didn't fuck it up. The tragic thing with these is we couldn't get the gimp masks in white. <laughs> <laughs> You've now converted your largest wild mammal in the UK into a meat product. Yeah. It's dead now. Yeah. Cutting it's just like slicing a steak. Exactly. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to bleed the animal. So we do that by going over the top of the breastbone with the knife there like that, okay? Did you see that? If you remove your hat, my friend, this is the bit you came for. You put that in your head like that, and you can shake my hand if you wish. And you've joined the elite club. Murder club. Okay. Make an incision and cut all the way up to the menach. The start of the breastbone. Turn our side of his. And what you can do here is put your hand on the top of it and give it a push down like that. Put the stomach away. And what you'll do here is you do a quick check on the health of the animal. Yeah. What you're looking at that there, the stomach of the animal is quite healthy. So that's your first indication that this animal, having curled it, is perfectly okay for the human food chain. So we're gonna slit it up and turn it into real genuine chunks of meat. I can really smell deer blood on my face. It seems a lot kinder than, you know, Barry farming or something like that. They just throw chickens into a tiny little fences and let them eat each other and shit on each other and live and die in equal amounts of abject horror. Do you not call that living in a city? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what we'll do is we'll process the animal, clean it out, we we'll take out its back passage, its heart, liver, and lungs, we we'll take its head and feet off, and then we'll skin the animal. Here we go, catch an end. On three, one, one two, three. three. You're looking right into the, the womb. Is that the womb? That's the womb there you're looking at. Whoa. She'd have been mated in early October. Okay, so when and, will and she give she'll, birth? she'll give birth probably around about the fifth, sixth of June would have been when the calf was born. Alright. Oh gosh. So that's oh a the sack God. there, okay? And there's the fetus. So you can see it is a whole little deer. Right, can I? And uh, if you look at it carefully. You can see it's a little female. Okay. Hopefully this will That's work. really not me for six. That has it? Has it, deer. has it? Okay. Yeah, it's like a deer. I can feel the bones inside it. Yeah. Oh, it is like a deer. Well, it is a deer. Yeah, it is a deer. Nice one. There you go. It comes out. It's like a Geiger drawing. 
that's coming off there. Yeah. What's interesting about this is that every step further we get into the kind of, you know, grotesque, you know, dismemberment, it actually becomes a lot easier to handle. There you go. How's that, man? He's here. I feel like such a psycho. <laughs> Are you glad like you finally, done? yeah, like I finally justified 25 years of eating lots and lots of meat. We had a group of ladies here a couple of years ago and they asked if we could uh, arrange testosterone courses for London men. I'm kind of into it. I mean, I'm a little bit disturbed that I'm not more disturbed by the whole process. I thought I was going to be feeling really squeamish, but it all seems quite natural. Yep. It seems, uh, I don't know, just like a trade, you know what I mean? It just seems like a, dealing with a physical issue in a physical manner. Uh -huh. It's all very competent, all very serious. It all makes sense, you know? That night was Burns Night, a night in honour of Scottish people's favourite poet. We'd been invited along, but we weren't the guest of honour. That privilege is always reserved for a locally produced venison haggis. His knife, see your rustic labour dight, and cut ye up your any slight, trenching your gushing entrails bright, like on a ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious sight, warm, reeking. Rich. Everyone was getting pretty smashed, and so was I. Perhaps that's why I agreed to wear a Scottish bow tie and read a poem I'd never read, full of words I didn't understand. I've got a couple of disabilities. The first is that I'm, I'm reading a Robert Burns poem in an English accent. And the second is that I'm quite drunk, so... I think you'll find them my special power, my friend. You'll all be wearing them in six months, no worry about that. Well, the, the poem I'm going to read is called The Trugger. As I come down by Annan's side, intending for the border, among the scruggy banks and braes, what met I but a trugger? He laid me down upon my back, I thought he was but joking. So he was in me, to the hilts. Oh, the devil tax it, Trogan. What could I say? What could I do? I banned and say miscad him. But wilty welty gad his eye, the mare that I forbade him. He stelled his foot against the stain, and doubled Ilka stroke him, till I gad daft among his hands. Oh, the devil tax it, Trogan. Then up we raised and took the road, and in by Ecclefecken, with a brandy stoop, we got it clink, and the strand beer ream the quetchin. But down the bent so borshaw braze, we took the part in yokin, of a live clad, a seri, cut cystine, oh the devil, tak sit trogin. Oh, 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 oh.